So, what is gamut? <laughs> so, the gamut is the range of the color. Uh, color space can represent, and SS has one of the widest gamut available in the Vive VFX pipeline. As you can see, this is the big one, SS 2065. You can hear it 2065. This is the big one which encompasses all other. So, we go step by step. So, this is the big brother, and then come to the SSCG. So, First, we are starting with the smaller one. Sorry, for the smaller one. The smaller one, uh, well known, uh, is the sRGB, and this is the most common color space for monitor and web. Uh, but the problem is it has a narrow gamut. And as I said, the gamut is the, uh, you, can, you can see it just like a, a pinter palette. So there is no much color information in the sRGB. It's very narrow. So like, um, it's something like the 709. Uh, which is the 709, which is the, um, the, um, uh, the, the color space used in, uh, in uh, TV, for example. And you can see the difference in this um, um, triangle, which represents the sRGB. That's why it, it looks like a triangle. This is uh, the S, this is, this is the RGB, the three color. And um, this compensates the color which is uh, in in the which are exist in the uh, in, in this uh, in this space as RGB uh, uh, RGB, and you can see the 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 triangle is becoming always smaller smaller. That means um, uh, the color compensated, for example, in seven and on is smaller than the one uh, in SSCG, and SSCG is smaller than the twenty sixty five. As I said, the big brother. This is the one that uh, compensate all every uh, color. Uh, as I said. Um, uh, gamut uh, existing in the VFX pipeline because it's the composite all other one, so it's the big biggest one. Because it's biggest one, you have a persistence uh, of uh, any um, you know you 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 get a very detailed color um, uh, using the SS uh, uh, color space. So. Um, in contrast, the SS color space has, an, as I said, wide gamut, meaning it can represent uh, far more color than sRGB or rec as I said. And this is, this is especially useful when dealing with raw or log footage because the, they tend to preserve this space and there nothing is manipulated, nothing is uh, altered. Uh, so because it's captured so in in way that it captured a broader range of color for real world, um, including uh, also the extremely vi vi vibrant color and uh, subtle tone that will be lost in smaller color space like for example 709 or sRGB so why this different uh, difference matter so the larger gamut allow for more flexible in color grading of course because you have more in the palette you have more color to deal with and you and ensure that you are not losing color information when transferring between software. This is very important. So that's why we have to uh, um, preserve the consistency when you dealing when exporting and importing in different software. And every software is is uh, using different uh, color space, and then, and then the color will be not uh, uh, exact the same in uh, in different software, and it will make a very big problem. <laughs> and and uh, and. And another thing is that you you are not losing any color information when in, you transfer between the when you exchange between software. So, for example, as an example, from bright sunset with deep oranges and pink may look like uh, dull in sRGB, but when you look at in SS uh, color space, you see the color still v uh, really vivid and uh, and uh, true like a, like a real life. So. Um, so, in, in conclusion, so the SS and match move uh, work together, uh, and uh, because the, the, the integration, the match move data will be properly managed, uh, managed by SS workflow, you, uh, in, the, in this case, you can ensure not only accurate motion tracking, because as I said, you preserve details and you can, you can track some details in the, in the footage, but also for the color consistency when you try to, in, in the, in the, in the, from start to finish, when, and especially when you start to, uh, to uh, do uh, more uh, realistic uh, uh, manipulation. So uh, you, you want to, to get photorealistic uh, results when you try to combine the live action with the 3D element. And that's why the, the color have to be the same. And you, you're gonna see how, how we do it. So 
how we do it in in, in Resolve and uh, when you bring it back again to, from Blender, uh, the tracking data and also the footage when you bring it back or even when we try to manipulate it inside the uh, inside the uh, compositing software like uh, like Nuke or compositing also uh, capability of Blender when we try to match the coral uh, to get more accurate uh, integration and this is very important to uh, make a bridge between the SS and the match move software I think it's very important to understand this and as I said you know you don't have to be scientists all you have to do to understand is when the data is uh, when you talk about the data is uh, uh, moving it in the, in the SS workspace it means it will convert it linear linear linearize uh, the the footage uh, it will put it in the area from 2065 when you render you render it into the CG to stay always in the same you know when you play when you say 2065 it's the same as uh, CG and um, you display it of course when you make your uh, you display it in rec or DC uh, p3 uh, DCI p3 is uh, for theater uh, known for common for theater uh, projector and the rec 2020 is for the HDR monitor so you this is the viewer uh, viewer devices so you view it in rec or DC or rec so to see the color the exact color when you are manipulating then when you export it you export it again into ss 2065 or the compiling ss uh, uh, color spaces in this case we preserve you know you go inside uh, convert it into ss we will uh, do some manipulation then we bring it back again in the ss 2065 so we're preserving the color uh, fidelity in um, after the alteration and, uh, and what is known as uh, I can show you in in uh, in result, for example, if you go to the color management, you know if you choose the SSCC. In this case, there's two CC and CCCT. All you have to know is that the CCCT is for the color. Uh, the uh, uh, guys that are manipulating color, <laughs> that are colorist, and for, we we deal only for the CC. It's, uh, enough then the ss version have to be consistent which uh, i i uh, know that my uh, blender and my uh, houdini are using the ss 1.2 i want to show you in a minute why um and uh, let me see if i can uh, bring this for you um uh one moment because it's very important if, how you can find it inside uh, in, uh, in inside uh, bl blender if you want to know which one because the uh, blender tend to change uh, in ch ch for every version so if you go uh, let me show you if you go into the blender uh, it's mostly it's installed under the program file using windows so you choose the blender for two uh, version for two and you click on data file and you see in the color management that i have uh, something called uh, readme so if i click inside you can see that you're using ss 1.2 opal color io so this i know that is uh, like this so in houdini you can find it depend how you install it uh, but you can find it um, in houdini if you go to the uh, edit color uh, OCIO, uh, ocio setting you can see uh, from me it's not uh, in uh, um, I, I do not put it in um, system variable so it's using the one is installed with the uh, pixar renderman pro server and this is one is ss 1.2 as you can see now i know that they are consistent i don't have any problem so i put it in the ss 1.2 same deal with the same deal with the nuke um when you export it to new all right so two things you have to know the input and output it means uh, as i said the input have to be in ss 2065 first you have to convert it into ss 2065 so what how, how this is done is is the if i if you shoot it in the, as i said if you shoot it in in, in raw or bureau it will be uh, accompanied with the metadata so that the uh, resolve know exactly which manif uh, camera manufacturer or the the, the, the uh, color space was uh, was used to capture the image if it if there is no uh, image if you for example if you get in the xr uh, sequence you know already converted from somewhere and it is um, it is in ss comp compliant so you don't know which one so they give you all uh, only the the camera manufacturer so you have to choose it here so you can so if you use the canon you can see 
there's a ton of them red and sony and you know rec uh, you know srgb also if it's only uh, uh, you know an srgb uh, uh, color space and you have to choose an srgb or uh, you know this common camera that are used uh, nowadays and you can choose it here and the output transform normally you have you don't have to touch this you just only if you stay in resolve and you are going to manipulate and do your color correction you have to set it to in any devices that you are looking uh, to so for example if you are using your monitor you are you are going to use um, srgb if you are using an hdr an hdr monitor you are going to use the rec 2020 and so on if you see if you you are manipulating the color on the projector so you use the rec 7 and tv you, you use the rec uh, 7 online and so on but in most cases you don't have to touch it you know you just let it if you uh, if you uh, if you know the manufacturer you can put it here if not just let it as is it will go inside the ss because the, because because i set up i set i set up the ssc no, I am in the I am in the SS um, uh, world if you if you want, and then from there I can do my conversion. I, if I put it inside, um, uh, let me as much show you. I can put it onto new timeline, give it a name, for example, China or something, you know, and then I go to the delivery, and in the delivery I'm going to choose the EXR or as I said EXR or uh, JPEG. But in this case, because there is no much information, as I come back to the color, as you can see, there is no. Uh, this is not a, a raw footage or something like the. the I think the, the. You know, there is no information. So if I put a little bit of highlight, it goes away, and there is no also much information in the darkness. So if I tend to darken a little bit the image, I lose detail in the darkness. So this is uh, uh, what I was referred for: crushed black and the clipped um, highlight. So. It doesn't make any sense to uh, to waste space uh, uh, in uh, saving the image in in EXR. So we just want to use uh, a JPEG because the you know because I don't have too much information to preserve. But on the other hand, if you have an EXR, if you have a, a raw of a, a log footage, for example, I uh, can show you if I if I go back to the uh, to the I think. Uh, um forget what i put it um let me see yeah if you if you if you deal with the uh, linearized uh, pictures something like raw or log you can see that the uh, first thing you recognize this with the uh with the with the flat uh, color uh, it looks like flat there is no uh, contrasty image you and because they are we want to preserve the details in the highlight and in the especially and it looks flat because it's um, uh, want to preserve the information in the dark you know in the in the shadow you can see there is some information there and in this case I have to you know if I export it to uh, sentai to do more accurate uh, match move so I, I have to let it so as it is without sorry without altering any uh, the curve you know without uh, touching the contrast you know or uh, without manipulating uh, doing anything to the curve uh, to the brightness or to the color space so we, d we just want to preserve it as is we export it as a um, neaxa all right and uh, for this we just want to use uh, for example uh, the XR and we choose the half uh, RGB half WAA only without compression we don't want you can see um, RGB uh, half this is 16-bit format and it's enough and then we go to the file and you choose four digit you know we just want four digit and start frame to one uh, uh, the common one is one zero zero one so that we have some pre-roll this is all you have to understand here so when you export it for the match move i stop here and we see us in blender <laughs> ciao